Welcome to worship. My name is Tom Fotenhauer, and I serve as the senior pastor at Woodbury Lutheran Church, and it is my joy and honor to welcome you into worship today or this morning or tonight, whenever it is that you are joining us uh, to come into the presence of God. And each and every week now, we've been gathering in this space, and we're putting together an experience where, where God's power can be unleashed in our lives through, through our singing and God's word and all those things that the Lord is doing uh, in us. And so I'm so excited that you've taken time to join with us in worship today. And as I look around this space, it is uh, different. It is so different not having you here and I got to tell you, I miss seeing faces sitting in these pews. Uh, I'll let you in on a secret. When this space was being built here on our Valley Creek campus in 1992, uh, I would sneak into the building and I'd walk up here uh, onto the balcony and there weren't these railings or anything else. And I would just look out over the space and I would, I would think about uh, how God was going to be, be moving and using this building uh, to make disciples and to transform lives. And so we miss you, and I miss you, but I'm so glad that we can, can continue uh, to join together digitally, uh, online, in our homes, wherever it might be, uh, to be filled by the Spirit of God and encouraged through this time of, of worship. And so we might not be filling these pews, but we want to fill the digital space, and so there's some ways that you can engage in worship as we're going along. Uh, if you're new with us, make sure you click that Connect button and fill out one of those connect cards so we can get to better know you and minister with you. Uh, we, we pray that you'll, you'll join in on the, that prayer tab. If you've got something that you want to pray about, just click that button. Uh, a new chat box will open up and our service host will be happy uh, to pray with you. Uh, speaking of the chat box, if you've got something going on that you want people to hear about during the service, maybe you want to shout out a, a hallelujah or hit that heart button when something touches you or you've got a, a question for the service host, uh, don't be shy to join uh, in, in chat. Uh, you'll also find during the, the service there'll be an opportunity to give and our service host will make sure that that button uh, comes up along with other things along the way, next steps, small groups, all sorts of ways for you uh, to be engaged with the ministry uh, of Woodbury Lutheran Church. And we know that we have people joining us from all over the nation, even all over the world, but if you're here in Minnesota, 
uh, you know that our governor announced some new protocols that are going to be kicking in uh, on Monday. And that really changes nothing for us at this time. And so I want you to know that as uh, your staff and your council and elders, we're all working together really hard at figuring out uh, what our next steps are when it comes to regathering together safely. Uh, but for now, we're going to continue to to meet together uh, online and worship God in this way. Uh, but you know, ministry is still happening. Uh, the church has never closed. If you want to get me uh, angry and upset, you'll say, uh, Woodbury Lutheran closed down. We haven't closed. The doors have not closed for one moment, for one bit. Ministry continues to go on. And our mission teams are, are working in different ways to continue the ministry in one such way is by sending a whole bunch of masks up to Cake, Alaska. A Cake is a community that we've been connected with for over 10 years now. And what a joy it is to join together with them to continue this ministry of making disciples and transforming lives. And so again, thanks for being with us. And I'm excited to say that worship starts right now.
Welcome to Woodbury Lutheran Church, our online campus. Uh, my name is Pastor Tim Marshall. I'm the care pastor here at Woodbury Lutheran. We're so excited that you could join us today for worship. We know you have many choices. Uh, some of those choices wouldn't include worship on this day, but you've chosen to worship our God, and we're so grateful for that. As we gather today, we do so knowing that we continue in our sermon series called Refresh. And Dean Donovan, our Oak Hill campus pastor, is sharing with us that message. Let us begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter. This is a reading that will become familiar to you in the next couple of weeks. We'll read this not only today, but the following two weeks as well. We're reminded, as Jesus shares with us in this reading, the value and importance of looking up, of walking together, and of reaching out. We hear these words. One day, soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be apostles. Here are their names. Simon, whom he named Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. When they came down from the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large, level area, surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the sea coasts of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those troubled by evil spirits were healed. Everyone tried to touch him because healing power went out from him, and he healed everyone. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our songs of praise. Torn through, we stand before you in mercy. 
mercy is all you speak. The curtain was torn through east and before you. Mercy is all you speak. The curtain was torn through east and before you. Mercy is all you speak.
What words of promise we just sang together. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. And certainly there are lots of us who are feeling overwhelmed during these times. And I've been feeling overwhelmed with gratitude uh, toward our congregation and uh, the generosity that, that just lives within the spirit of who we are that's uh, deeply rooted in our values of, of not clinging tightly to the things of this world, but uh, clinging tightly instead to Jesus. And that shows itself in amazing ways. And of course, uh, one of the ways that it showed itself in a pretty amazing and spectacular way is through our Easter uh, give back. Again, $90,000 given out to six different organizations. And today, uh, it's my honor to highlight one of those organizations, uh, Esperanza. And they're helping families that are feeling overwhelmed with lack of food in their lives. And one of our, our members was helping with that ministry just this last week, and they were helping to distribute food. And in one hour, more than 200 cars went through the line, and each of those cars represents between one and three families that received fresh food and received uh, items that will help them not to be so overwhelmed during this time. And so just think about that. Uh, 200 cars in one hour, all to receive those gifts. And that's because of your generosity, that that's even possible. And so it's such a joy in the midst of this time where we're, we're feeling overwhelmed and we're not understanding all the things that are going on, that we can continue to show others what it looks like to be generous because of the generosity that we have received in Jesus. Uh, during this next song, we're going to be receiving our offering and our service host will, will put something in the chat that's a, a little give button. You can just click on that if you would like to give uh, online. Uh, lots of you continue to send in checks. You can continue to do that. I love the notes that you're giving me. Uh, I've got a pile on my desk that's about six inches high now of notes of encouragement and prayers and thanksgiving from you. And so I thank you uh, for that gift uh, to me. And you can also pull out your phone and that QR code is up on the screen right now. Just open up your camera and, and point it on the screen and it will take you exactly where you need to go. I've been so encouraged by how many of you have jumped to online giving. Uh, that helps us so much in our planning to have a steady uh, amount of money uh, coming in that we can continue to do ministry. And so thank you uh, if you have taken that step as well. Again, in these moments, it's easy to be overwhelmed by the things that are happening in the world around us. But we have this incredible blessed assurance from our God that he will walk with us, that he will guide us, and that he will provide for us in incredible ways. And so now as we have this opportunity to, to give, we do so joyfully with thanksgiving in our hearts for all that God has done for us in his son Jesus. Visions of rapture, a burst on my sight. 
angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Well, it is a joy for me to share God's word with you today and to be an encouragement to you. Last week, Pastor Tom introduced our new sermon series entitled Refresh, and he also introduced this beautiful piece of crafted furniture uh, by our very own vicar, Quincy. I had all the intentions to sit on this beautiful stool 
designed for the Jolly Green Giant and read to you today, um, but alas, I don't think it will hold me. But I want to share with you uh, something that, that brings me a lot of joy and I think is a beautiful example of what we're going to be talking about today entitled Raise Your Gaze and that we would actually look up. And so as I was preparing for this message, I was reminded of a book that I would share with my children when they were young. Uh, it's entitled A Great Day for Up, and it's a great day for Up by Dr. Seuss. And no, I'm not going to read the entire book to you, um, but maybe someday. But the end of this book ends with this, Up, Up, Up. It's a great day for Up. Wake every person, pig and pup, till everyone on earth is up. So here we are in the midst of a global pandemic, and God is asking us to raise our gaze, that we would look to him, that we would look up to the goodness and the kindness and the grace and the accessibility of God. You know, spring brings about all sorts of uh, memories for, for many of us, and I know that spring is is not the same uh, this year. But my flood of memories um, remind me of softball. And I know many of us don't have our seasons uh, right now, but I coached fast pitch softball for 18 years at Concordia Academy. And like many springs in Minnesota, as we would begin our season, our practices would happen in the gymnasium because there was about six inches of snow out on the field. And one particular practice that we were having, if you can imagine this, softballs flying everywhere. Um, girls actually uh, throw really, really hard. Um, and some of them throw even accurately. Uh, this, is, this is a chaotic thing. And in this room, as, as softballs are flying everywhere, my children would oftentimes accompany me uh, to the school. And during all of this chaos of softballs flying, I happened to raise my gaze and look up and see my daughter Grace, who was nine years old at the time, running in a full sprint in the upper level of the gym, not paying attention to where she was going. Her gaze was not up. And as I saw her sprint, she turned her head and slammed her head into an open door, into the corner of an open door. That story, and I know that was probably uh, something you didn't want to hear today, um, but that story reminds me, um, like this book, that we need to look up, we need to pay attention to what's happening in our, in our lives and to what's happening around us all the time. And so, Last week also, Pastor Tom introduced us to this word, kairos, that in the midst of our chronos, our sequential time that just passes, we have these moments, these kairos moments, where we are almost um, demanded to take action, to think and assess, what am I doing? Where am I going? It's a crucial moment in time to assess. What do I want? Where am I going? What is God offering me? And so these Kairos moments happen all the time. And I'm, I'm reminded of this beautiful quote by St. Augustine where he says, Thou hast, in, in his response to God, in his book Confessions, he says, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. And so oftentimes, we are restless in these moments, in our kairos moments, trying to get perspective, trying to understand um, what is happening and where we are going. And I would say that too often times, uh, the reality of what we're longing for is not God. In fact, right now, if we were to ask this question, what are you longing for? What do you want right now? I would, I'm, I'm, I'm in this with you. I, I would actually say, you know what I want? I want to go out for dinner. That's what I want. 
I want, to, I, want to, I want to be with my friends. I want to be with my family. For some of you, and I feel this for you, I want my season back. I want to be out on the field. I just want to gather with people that I love. And all of those are gifts from God. But please understand this. Those things are not God. In fact, the Apostle Paul makes this very clear, what oftentimes happens to us, in that we exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve. And I think this is disturbing, to actually serve created things rather than the creator who is forever blessed. Amen. Don't we get caught up in that, in in this fast-paced, moving, so many things flying around us world that we live in? And now we have this moment, this kairos moment, to stop worshiping and serving the created things and raise our gaze up to the Lord. C.S. Lewis says it like this, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. And so we find ourselves here in the midst of a kairos moment. And God is saying, will you pay attention? Will you you look to me and listen? because he wants to invite us in and up into his loving, kind, gracious presence where he provides for us with open arms. In our reading from Hebrews uh, today, we heard these words, by his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. Wow, the most holy place that Jesus himself, he is that curtain through which we go into the presence of God. What a a profound gift that Jesus has provided for us. And I hope you, I hope you hear these words. You have access to God, the most holy place. You have access to God. You have access to God. Infinite, abiding, joy-giving, life-fulfilling, soul-sustaining access to God. And this may seem like a foolish thing to say, but we're oftentimes foolish and easily distracted. But it was no small thing what Jesus accomplished for us in the tearing of the curtain and the opening up of access to God. Scripture tells us that he who knew no sin became sin on our behalf, that Jesus would actually become all of the sickness, all of the pain. Think about this right now in in the situations that we are in, or, or even past, even future, of all of human pain and suffering and loss and death and sickness. Jesus became all of that on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. This is no small thing in the history of eternity. That's what Jesus accomplished for us, the spotless Lamb of God would go to the cross and take all of this pain and nail it there and leave it there so that sickness and death would not have the last say on you. Wow, what a gift. Access to God. Raise your gaze up to the living God who welcomes you. You know, Jesus is not only our access, but he is our example. There's a, uh, 
beautiful display of the life of Jesus in all of the Gospels. And I've, I found this to be interesting that all of the Gospel writers mention this, this, this life thing that Jesus would do. In fact, in our reading from Luke 6 today, we hear these words. Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. What, what, do, you, what do you think about that? The refreshment of God. Jesus actually sought out his Father, sought out God. Consider this, Jesus is God, and yet Jesus would go away. He would, he would leave the busyness of his life He would leave the crowds. He would leave even his disciples and go off to be alone, to be refreshed by his heavenly Father, to be sustained by God himself. All of the gospel writers tell us that Jesus would do this, that he would go up. You know, the last two weeks, you've been learning a lot of Greek, chronos, we have a Kairos moment. So here's a little bit more. I hope you'll, you'll bear with me here. But Jesus went up to the Eremos. This is the word that all of the gospel users uh, use, gospel writers use, um, to, to tell us where Jesus would go. And sometimes in the scriptures, it's interpreted wilderness. Like in our reading for today, a mountainside. Um, sometimes it's, it's described as a lonely place. But this word actually means a solitary place. So Jesus would just go off to be with his heavenly Father, to be refreshed by the presence and the goodness and the provision of God. And so that invitation is for you and for me as well. God actually invites us into the Eremos, into a solitary place, into the most holy place where we would be refreshed. You know, it's, it's funny to me as well that Jesus, in our, in our gospel reading for today, it says that he prayed all night long, that he would actually consider time with his heavenly Father to be more refreshing than his own bed. I wonder if that would be true of us. I I, I question that. But the reality is is that God's presence is the most refreshing thing we could ever have. And so I want to challenge you, church. Where is your your up? On a scale of 1 to 10, how's your up? Because it's a great day for up. It's a great day to enter into the Eremos, into having solitary time with your Father because that access has been made for you and it's for all of us. I want to challenge you um, to tell the people around you, to actually share um, this with your loved ones, with your family or your friends, how your time alone with God is. You know, we can get so caught up in so many other things, just scrolling through Uh, social media, or just binge watching Netflix in this, this time. But God is inviting you into his presence. Come, hear that. God is inviting you into his presence, into a kairos moment that will change everything and bring you hope. And so I'll ask you this. What is your next step? What will you do to make sure that you have solitary time with God? Because the access has been given to you and the example has been set and you, my friends, are invited. Let's pray. Almighty God, I thank you for our time in your word today. Jesus, you are the example of what it looks like to be close and intimate with God our heavenly father. And so Jesus, because you have made a way, you have opened up the door into the presence of God. God, I ask that you would stir up in us in this Kairos moment, a decision 
to say that we want to be with you, God. We want to be close with you in this place of discipleship that we would find our rest, our refreshment, our strength in you as we look up and raise our gaze to a good and kind and gracious Heavenly Father. All for your glory, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, uh, we come before you uh, after singing those words, uh, and in some sense, uh, we know them and we believe them to be true, 
Uh, in another sense, uh, some of that might be aspirational for us. Uh, we're praying that you would show us your power to break through in our hearts and lives. Uh, Lord God, you know us inside and out. You know uh, that we are fragile human beings, that we struggle uh, with things like fear and sin, uh, anxiety, guilt. Uh, we get troubled uh, over things that, that are very troubling. Uh, there's so much going on in our lives and in our world right now. Uh, and Heavenly Father, we, we trust and we know that you are breaking through in the midst of all of it in your mercy and grace. And we pray that you would open our eyes to see you, that you would draw us into a deeper connection, a deeper relationship with you as our perfect Heavenly Father. Uh, God, as we continue on in this season of unknowns, and we pray specifically for those who, who are sick and facing troubles and burdens in their lives right now. Uh, God, we pray also for families who have lost loved ones. Uh, we pray that you would surround them with your grace and protection. God, in our homes, uh, we pray that your Holy Spirit uh, would be leading the way, uh, that we would uh, turn our eyes towards you, that our conduct uh, would be in such that, that it would give glory to your name, uh, keep us uh, from sliding into discord, uh, into anger, uh, into pride. God, help us remain unified. Give us wisdom for the days ahead. And we ask all of these things because, once again, we know that you have the power to break through in our lives by the power of your Holy Spirit. So we pray that that would happen in us, in our relationships, in our communities, and in your world for your glory. Hear us as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's been an honor and a privilege to join with you in worship online. We're so thankful for this blessing of technology. Uh, maybe you want to leave a note in the chat uh, with what, what you're leaving with today. What's the big thing that's standing out to you? Maybe you want to hit that connect with us button on the top. Uh, there's a variety of different ways uh, that we can connect with you. One of them is coming up this Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can come back to this exact same website, live.woodburylutheran.org. Uh, and a round table, digital round table of our pastors are going to be talking uh, over this sermon series, Refresh, what we talked about this weekend. We're going to be answering your questions live as well, uh, so don't miss that this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Also, our service hosts are going to be placing a link to this week's scripture card in the chat. And I want to encourage you uh, to click on that link. Uh, I said it all the time when we met in person at the Liberty Ridge campus. Don't let what we talked about today just stay here today. Dive deeper into it during the week. Make sure you click that link and dive into the scripture card as you go through your week this week. Uh, and we recognize, though, that we're, we're not sending you <laughs> anywhere. You already are uh, out in your neighborhoods, in your homes, in your jobs. Maybe some of you are returning to work this week uh, you go as a disciple of Jesus, uh, and so live as a disciple of Jesus. Be encouraged by our God who breaks through. I want to share with you these words of blessing uh, from Paul's word to the church in Ephesus. Pray in the Spirit at all times on an every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, dear brothers and sisters, and may God the Father... And the Lord Jesus Christ give you love with faithfulness. May God's grace be eternally upon all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed, friends. Live as disciples of Jesus. This is my Savior's blood Your beauty of heaven wrapped in my shame The image 
Salvation is in His blood 